Hi everyone, this is Editing Natasha. Before we start, I just wanted to let you know that the watercolour swatching is going to be in a separate video because this one turned into such a mega swatching session. So enjoy one hour's worth of swatching of inks, acrylic gouache and pens. And I'll be back with the watercolour swatching in the next video. Hi everyone and welcome to the Mega March Art Hall swatching session. This is going to be an enormous swatching session. One could say it's going to be a mega swatching session. So you might want to get a drink, you might want to get some snacks, you might want to just get whatever project you're working on, put me on in the background, I'll swatch away and you can work on whatever it is you're working on. Um, or you could just sit back and enjoy it. Whatever you do, it's lovely to have you here with me. And as you can see, I have prepared in advance <laughs> some swatch sheets. Because there was so much to swatch, I needed to break it down into categories. And I also needed to pre-label everything because I thought it would take too much time to try and do that while we're swatching. So I'll show you what I have here. I have this one for the inks. I think there were 17 different inks. So that's exciting to be able to swatch those finally. And this one for the um, watercolours. So again, really excited. Some of these have been in the studio since February and I am really looking forward to swatching them. I have shown immense willpower, I think, to not try them before now, but because I wanted to try them on camera with you for the first time. I thought, um, I thought I'm just going to have to have willpower. So I did. There are just to be fully transparent and clear. There were three inks, I think it was. The diamine inks. Um, oh yeah, I have something to tell you about those as well. Okay, so firstly, the three diamine inks um, that I had in the art hall, I did actually give my patrons on Patreon a quick preview of those in a big inks video I did. So I have tried those, but I haven't tried the other inks I have on here. I don't think I've tried any of the others. Um, no, they're all completely new. Um, so it'll be a first time for me. I wanted to just say <laughs> that some extra inks may have made their way into this watching session since I posted the art haul. So we have, in addition to the, was it two acrylic inks? I think it was two Liquitex acrylic inks in the art hall. I now have an extra one, the muted pink. Somebody told me this would be a really nice color and I saw it swatched online, really liked it. So I just ordered that the other day as well. So I'm gonna include that in this session. Also, I have two diamine inks um, that weren't in the art hall. I think it was Odinil and Salamander. That was the other one. So we have a couple of extra inks, which I'm sure you won't mind. Um, on this little swatch card, I'm just using up bits of paper I have around the studio, <laughs> which is why these little swatch cards are kind of odd sizes. So this is going to be for the Turner acrylic gouache. I had eight of those, so I'm going to swatch those on there. This is going to be for the pink beige Ecoline brush pen set. This is for the green Ecoline brush pen set. So those are all labelled. One thing I do have here is a tiny little swatch card. You might remember that in the art hall I just ordered some white pencils. Um, they were the Derwent Drawing Chinese White, which is a really good creamy, opaque white pencil if you're looking for one. I didn't swatch those out because there's very little point on camera in swatching out a white pencil on white paper. Just take my word for it. I have kind of featured them in other videos on my channel. So um, they are a really good pencil if you're looking for an opaque white. So I ordered a couple of those, a couple of the Stabilo All Whites. Um, they're pretty good as well. The only problem I have with those is that they can sometimes break quite easily, which I haven't had. I mean, I haven't had this problem with the Derwent drawing pencils, um, but they're also another really good opaque white pencil. Um, so yeah, I didn't get many pencils in this art haul. So what I thought I would do to save on time is just quickly swatch them out so that I can show you um, 
the completed swatch card. So it was the Holbein Artists Luminous Red. So that's how that looks. It's probably not coming out quite as bright on screen as it looks in reality. Um, the Caran d'Ache Luminance Spring Green. I haven't had this colour before. Really lovely sort of zingy green, perfect for this time of year as we're going into April. Um, I have a Luminance Black and a Faber-Castell Polychromos Black. You can see that once again, and I find this all the time with the Polychromos versus the Luminance, is that the Luminance always look kind of darker and richer. So you can see those blacks, hopefully that's coming through on screen. You can see that they look quite different. I don't know whether that's in focus because I can't see the um, screen from where I am, but hopefully you can see that okay. Um, yeah, I just needed some black pencils and I wanted to try a couple of different ones to see which ones I prefer. The only other kind of individual pen I had was a Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen. This is the Bullet Nib Black. I don't have any of the Bullet Nib pens. I thought it'd just be a handy black pen to do some line work, I don't know, add some details, do quick sketches, whatever. Um, and yeah, that's how it looks. It's um, just a nice black pen, really. So we'll put that aside. And I think let's just start. I'm really keen to start, I think, with the inks. Shall we start with the inks? You may remember this from the art hall as well. I will be testing for the first time this glass dip pen. So we're going to give that a go because this is something I actually want to use in my work. I don't, I can't get the lid on. <laughs> I don't just want that to be a decorative object. I know it looks absolutely beautiful, but I do actually want to use it. And the other day, while I was on Colt Pens, I've been thinking about getting one of these for a while and I had a discount voucher. Um, this is the Lamy Safari um, fountain pen and I have the converter here so I can use it with bottled ink. I've been looking at this for ages and um, they actually, I think, did they have an offer on this pen and I had a voucher? It was something like that. Anyway, it was a really good deal. So I decided to just bite the bullet and get it. I'm not going to be testing that in this art haul because I think we've got enough to look at, but this will be featuring in a video soon. I want to make a video about different um, pens I have that I'm going to be using with the ink. Um, by the way, I have a Noodler's Ahab Flex, is that how you say that? Fountain pen. I bought that last year. I've been trying to use it, but I'm not getting on very well with it. So I need to um, watch a couple of videos, I think, because I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. I can't seem to get it to do really nice thick lines. It's supposed to be able to do thin lines and thick lines. And it works well if you're just using it lightly for thin lines, but I can't get it to do nice, consistent, thick lines. If any of you have that pen, let me know how you get on with it. Let me know if there's something I should be doing. Um, so yeah, I've been kind of playing around with that and trying it. The other pen I have, by the way, is this Tacky Kawa Dip Pen. Um, I'm not sure what nib it has it's a g nib it has says g on it anyway i got this from colt pens last year as you can see i have been using that i was planning on making a video where i used this dip pen and the noodler's fountain pen um for the first time on camera but i actually just in the end wanted to experiment myself because i hadn't actually used a dip pen i think this might be the first time in my life i've used a dip pen um I used fountain pens at school. I'm trying to think, did I ever use a dip pen in art at school? I don't think I did. But I've been using this one and I love it. I absolutely love it. So yeah, we'll feature that in another video. Right, so there's a lot of chat and not much action. <laughs> so let's get on to the actual swatching. Okay, so the ink we're gonna start with, um, and what I'm gonna do with these is just brush them on. These are fountain pen inks. You can use them, obviously, in a fountain pen, but you can also use them with um, a brush. So I don't know how well they work, actually, with dip pens. The ink I've been using with the dip pen is the Diatramentis Document ink, and that seems to work really well. I don't know how well these would work. I'm going to have to experiment with all of this because this is all quite new to me. 
But I'm gonna be swatching with the Betty Hayways watercolor brush. Do I have to shake these up before I use them? I don't know, but let's just, we'll give it a quick shake <laughs> just in case. But what I love about these Herbin inks is that they have this little brush rest on the bottle, which is really cute. If you can hear a lot of noise, um, it's the rain lashing at the window. We actually have a crazy storm going on outside. It's amazing how many times I film and there's a storm outside. So, coincidence? <laughs> Okay, this is the Herbin Verdigris. I'm going to swatch these in kind of a similar way to how I have started swatching all of my watercolours um, in this kind of pebble swatching style. Inks are interesting because they always dry up in a... Um, always dry, rather. <laughs> in a really beautiful way. They seem to sometimes separate. Um, I think somebody said it's called chromatography. Um, I don't know whether that is correct, but they are different to watercolour. You could think in some ways they're kind of similar, but I'm noticing that they do have different properties and I intend to use them for mixed media work. So I'm only now really getting into using inks. I've used the FW acrylic ink for years. So I'm kind of familiar with that one. But generally speaking, I don't use inks in my work until only very recently I've started getting into them, as I say. The paper I'm swatching on, by the way, because I'm often asked, is the Bockingford 200 pound cold pressed paper. Um, this surface is called Knot. Um, N-O-T, so it's kind of a lightly textured watercolour paper. Um, it's relatively inexpensive, which is why I use it for swatching. Okay, so this one is the Herbin Ruil, Ruil d'Anc. Don't know whether I'm saying that correctly, but apparently the English translation is Anchor Rust. So let's see how this looks. Oh, this is a really pretty pinky, a pinky orange, pinky brown. Yeah, I think I'd describe it as a pinky brown. So the verdigris, this one was recommended to me by one of my patrons. Um, that This one that I'm swatching at the moment, I actually just happened to see this when I was buying the other one. And I thought it looked like a really interesting colour. Um, and I was right, actually. I'm really liking that it has these different um, colours coming through. So you have the brown and the pink. Really, really pretty. And quite subtle. I like it. So these being fountain pen inks... Um, they're probably not light fast. So I'm going to be using these just for sketchbook work. So obviously I wouldn't want to use these in pieces that I'm going to, to sell. Um, originals, for example, I'm going to sell. And they're going to be hanging on someone's wall. I need light fast inks for that. I do have some light fast inks here, by the way. I'm going to be trying all sorts of different inks. Okay, so I'm excited about these ones. These are the Robert Oster Signature Fountain Pen Inks. Again, I don't think they're light fast, so I'll be using them for sketchbook work only, but I could run some light fast tests actually. Maybe I'll do that this summer and just see how these fare, but I'm not expecting them to be light fast. So I've wanted some Robert Oster inks for ages now, and because they're quite expensive, I... I waited until these were on offer at Colt Pens. I mean, I'm shaking all of these inks before using them. I don't know whether you're supposed to do that or whether you need to do that, rather. 
So this is Devon Green and it is a really beautiful summery kind of green. I really want to work on more green landscapes so I'm hoping that I'm going to use all of the green supplies I've been collecting lately, <laughs> the various different mediums. Hopefully I'm going to be using those in my sketchbook a lot over the summer and also to create some pieces to sell. Oh, I like that. Seems to have a kind of slight brown kind of coming through there. I like that it seems to be sort of multi-layered. That's really nice. Okay, let's try the Tiverton Rust. I wonder how similar that's gonna be to this one. It's interesting, the verdigris, I kind of in some ways was expecting that to look a little bit more green. I mean, it's a lovely colour. It's one I'm definitely going to use a lot because it's a real Natasha colour, but I did expect that to look a little bit more green, as the name would kind of suggest. Okay, let's try the Tiverton Rust. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Perfect autumnal colour. Gosh, that is gorgeous. So I'd be tempted to put this one in one of the fountain pens. Yeah, so as I say, we're going to do, I think, a video where I look at um, drawing with ink pens. Try the different pens and Let's see what I can do. Different pens with different inks. I don't know when that will be because I have this watercolour series that I'm working on for YouTube at the moment. Um, but I might slot that one in. It's good to have a little break from things and do something a bit different. One looks like an egg. Oh, I love that colour. I'm glad that it looks quite different to the Ruil, Ruil Donk. Because um, I did wonder whether they might actually look very similar. Okay, so the next one is something different again. This is the Rora and Klingner. This is, I'm not going to try and pronounce that in German, but this is the antique ink. So it's like um, a traditional ink. I believe it's acrylic based. It has some acrylic in it. Um, it says a pigmented drawing and calligraphy ink resistant to erasing and waterproof. So obviously these ones I don't think are waterproof. This one is, um, and this one is also light fast. So that's another plus and I really like the other Rora and Klingner inks I have so let's try this one and see how this Payne's Grey looks. Oh wow, <laughs> oh that's nice. Okay let's just pop that bottle over there. Oh gosh, this is beautiful. Look at this. This is a really blue Payne's Grey. Some of them are less blue. But if you like a blue Payne's Grey, this could be the one for you. They're very interesting to see how these dry because I've noticed with inks, they sometimes look quite different wet to dry. Okay, I'm going to just drop, which is what I should have done with the other ones actually. It's quite interesting to just drop some in and just see how that dries. Yeah, the Robert Oster has like a slight bit of granulation going on there actually, and so does that one. I think this paper seems to make things granulate a lot. 
Um, there was a paint I used, I'm trying to remember which one it was, in one of my previous swatching videos. And was it the Winter and Newton Aqua Green? I think it was. And it doesn't normally granulate, and it looked like it granulated on the paper, so I don't know. Okay, this is the second one of these inks. I only bought two of these. They do, I think, I want to say about 12 colours. I might be wrong, maybe 16. Um, I only bought two. So this is the Chop Chopscrun. <laughs> Um, this is also light fast. I think this is quite a bright green, if I remember correctly. So I was thinking again for sort of spring, summer landscapes. Um, this can be used obviously in my sketchbook or for original pieces that I'm going to sell because it is light fast. Oh yeah, that's definitely a spring, summer colour, isn't it? Look at that. I think probably when you, let's just pop that over there. I think probably when this is more diluted, it probably looks quite yellow, like a yellow green. So you've got to imagine all of these greens together the green supplies I'm going to be swatching. Greens all together, all of the different shades of green look so beautiful. A while ago that definitely wouldn't have been my colour, but now I'm so into using greens. All of the different shades of green. And I think mixed with the other greens, the darker ones, the more blue greens, um, or earthy greens, it's going to look lovely. So we're going to move on to the other Rora and Klingner inks. Now these are slightly different. These are the sketch inks. So I already have a couple of these. I have um, a lovely grey and a black. So this time I bought Lily, which is I think a sort of greenish brown, Carmen, which is bright orange, and Frida, which is like a petrol blue, I believe. Um, these are good because apparently they are fountain pen inks, um, but they're also waterproof. You can use them with brushes and they are light fast. Um, I think when you use these ones in a fountain pen, I have heard that you should make sure you're using the pen regularly and also wash it out, flush it through um, if you're not going to be using the pen for a while. So I think they can clog the pen. This is what I heard. I haven't tried it myself, but um, yeah, this is what I heard somewhere. Oh, wow, this is, yeah, this is a nice brown. I've had my eye on this one for a while because I kind of felt like this would be really, really nice in my work. Yeah, I can imagine using this one a lot. Keen to try this actually with the dip pen. I don't know how well it would work with the dip pen. I mean, certain inks I think are better with dip pens than others. And as I say, I'm just kind of learning really. So the wind is gusting so much out there. We actually had a wind warning earlier today and um, it's going crazy out there. So if you can hear all sorts of strange noises, um, it's probably the roof blowing off or something. <laughs> let's hope not. <laughs> okay, let's try Frida. I'm trying to make sure I rinse the brush out really well between these. Ah, Frida looks a little bit like the Rora and Klingner Payne's Grey. Um, possibly a little bit lighter. Let's just add some water to this. It's kind of similar. I was going to say if you have one you probably don't need the other but 
different inks have different properties and I mean this one I think did we say it's what did we say it was suitable for um drawing and calligraphy ink I don't think this one oh this one actually does say shake well before use I don't think that one can be used in fountain pens whereas this one could so I don't know you might want both depends on what you're doing <laughs> oh that's quite close to the other one now isn't it I'm very conscious of the time I think this is going to be such a long video purely because there's so much to swatch I couldn't believe it when I was actually writing down all the names I um I don't know, it didn't look like that much stuff until I started writing it all down. Then I was like, this video is going to be like two hours long or something. That's a pretty colour. I think it is going to dry lighter than the Payne's Grey. Okay, let's try Carmen. Well, this is going to be a bit of a strange um, swatch, isn't it? <laughs> I haven't got much room for this one. I actually thought this bright orange might be a bit of hair on there might be quite nice with um like a really deep blue and greys i just thought it'd be nice to have a really bright orange ink Ooh, i think i've shaken this one up rather a lot it's got lots of little bubbles in it it's a very lovely color that's juicy <laughs> So those of you who know my work will know that um, I tend to work in a limited colour palette in each individual piece of work, but I'm expanding my colour palette in general. So for a while, I only really used to use very sort of earthy tones, um, quite... I guess you could say dark moody colours. I wasn't a bright colour kind of artist. Um, I didn't use greens. I know this is hard to believe, but um, when I say didn't, very, very rarely, I'll say that, very, very rarely used green. Um, I found it really difficult to use and it's only recently within the last year or so that I've really started using green and absolutely, I'm obsessed with green now. Green is like one of my favourite colours now. Even though you look at this colour, perhaps, this orange, and think that's not really a Natasha Newton colour. Um, I wouldn't use, for example, in a painting, I wouldn't use all of these colours together in one painting. I would definitely limit the palette I use for any particular piece of artwork, just through personal preference. This is just how I feel like my work looks best and it's what appeals to me when I'm looking at work. I love a limited colour palette. I don't know why, I've kind of wondered why this is the case with me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it stems from, but um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it just seems to be the way I am and it seems to be what I like, so. Okay, so the next three we're going to swatch are the Liquitex acrylic inks. I have muted grey, muted pink and muted green. So muted pink is the first one we're going to use. These separate a bit so you need to shake them up really well. Okay so I'm going to use the dropper for this and just drop a little bit on there. Do we need a bit more? Maybe. Oh this already looks like such a nice colour. So the Liquitex muted inks were recommended to me by Larry. Um, she is one of my patrons and she's been using these and loves them. Oh well, this is <laughs> such a pretty colour. Wow. I love that it's granulating quite a lot as well. It looks like it is. That texture, so nice. Oh, I love that. Gosh, doesn't it look nice with the Herbin, <laughs> the Herbin 
Ruille d'Anc. My French is spectacular. I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> Sorry, anyone. Um, if I have any French viewers, I apologise for murdering your language. Okay, this one is the muted grey, so I'm going to give this a good shake as well and we'll see what this one looks like. I'm excited to try this one now because the other one is so nice. Oh, look at how the sketch ink is drying. It was quite a bit lighter than I thought, actually. I like that, what an interesting colour. I know to some of you, because it's not bright, it's, you know, it's quite a dull colour. <laughs> it's probably not that interesting, but to me, I love this kind of thing. Okay, has that been shaken up enough? Let's hope so. Okay, so this is muted grey. Looks quite like a purpley blue from what I can tell. Love these little bottles with the dropper. That's um, really useful. Okay, so yeah, these are an acrylic ink. They are light fast. They're not for fountain pens. I'm guessing I could, could I use it with a dip pen? Let me know. Oh gosh, this is dark. <laughs> I think I might have put a bit too much on here. Let me rinse my brush out. My water has gone the most lovely colour. I went to change it a minute ago um, off camera and it, um, it now looks, <laughs> with a mix of this muted pink and muted grey, it's just gone the most gorgeous uh, sort of dusky pink colour. Yeah, what was I going to say? Yeah, I did a huge experimental inks video for my patrons. I think that was last month. Um, it was so much fun because I already own a few inks. These are like additions. Um, I mean, my ink collection now has really expanded <laughs> with this art hall. But I did have a few inks, including the Ferris Wheel Press inks. I don't know whether any of you have heard of those. But um, they do some incredible inks. The colours are absolutely stunning. And the packaging, the bottles, they're just beautiful. They're quite expensive, so I only have two. Yeah, I swatched those. I swatched um, several of the other inks I had. And, oh yes, I swatched three of these diamine inks. And um, it was a really fun video, actually, because I layered a little bit. I mixed some colours with the FW acrylic inks. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed doing that and made me realise the importance of playing with your art supplies. Because it's only then that you can discover what you can do with different materials. And I love trying to layer different media because you get some really interesting results sometimes. Gosh, that is a gorgeous colour. Muted grey honestly looks more like a gorgeous dark purple, a purple grey, really. Really, really nice. I'm loving these colours. So finally, for the Liquitex inks, we have the muted green. I'm always worried when I shake these that <laughs> something's going to come out. It's going to go everywhere. I wonder whether... I'm using a bit too much for the small area. Yes, is the answer. Oh my word, look at that. This is more of a blue green and I've always loved blue greens. Even when I wasn't really a green fan, I always really enjoyed a blue green. I'd just say these actually weren't too expensive compared to some of the other inks. So if you're looking for some good inks, that are light fast. Um, obviously you wouldn't be able to use them in a fountain pen, the Liquitex inks, but if you're looking for some in some gorgeous colours, have a look at the muted range. Aren't they stunning? Larry, you were right. I really love this green. And I'm really enjoying these three colours together. Right, now on to the diamine inks. We have five of those. 
So we're going to swatch those. Then we'll get on to, I think, maybe we'll break it up and do the Ecoline brush pens um, and the Turner acrylic gouache. What I might do, as this is all in real time, is speed up the Ecoline brush pens, speed up the swatching, um, and then show you at the end, and do the same with the Turner acrylic gouache. But then we'll move on to the watercolours and we'll do those in real time because I know how much you love to see the watercolour swatching in real time. Okay, so the first one we have here is the Odenil. Let's see what it looks like. The swatch online looked really nice. Gosh, look at this one, it's looking so good now, it's drying a bit. Oh wow, Odenil is brighter than I thought. Let's just use some water with this one. Just to, that was quite a strong colour. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? That's definitely like a Cornish coast ocean colour. Okay, I'm just going to drop some in there just so you can see what it does. Mix it a little bit. There we go. Beautiful colour. Much brighter than I was expecting. I mean, obviously you can water them down if you're using them with a brush. Um, so, yeah. You can make them a little bit lighter. I'm wondering whether that's going to be too similar to this one. This is teal and um, I bought the teal first. Let's just see how similar they are. Am I going to regret having bought both? I mean they're not very expensive. These ones are only £2.45 each so. Oh no, I'm not going to regret it. <laughs> this is darker for sure. Well, wow, this one looks like it goes really nicely with the Liquitex muted colours, doesn't it? Quite dramatic, sort of moody and bright at the same time, if that's possible. The next one is Earl Grey and I can already tell you this is a gorgeous colour. So this is one of the ones I did test briefly with my patrons. You can see it first when it goes on, it looks very grey and then you start seeing this gorgeous sort of pinky, purpley Very subtle colour coming through. If you really dilute it, it actually looks quite blue as well. It's lovely. The diamine inks are fountain pen inks, so obviously I don't think they're light fast. I'm pretty sure they're not, but I will run some light fast tests so we can find out. I'll um, organise those soon and until then I'm going to use them in my sketchbook, but look how pretty that Earl Grey is. It looks a little bit like Moon Glow, Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. The next one is Salamander. I haven't tried this one, so this is going to be a complete surprise. <laughs> oh my word. Gosh, this is better than I ever thought it would be. <laughs> I thought it looked good. But, oh my goodness, this is stunning. I love this kind of dark green. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh my goodness, I love it. Did you guess that I love it? <laughs> yeah, that's really lovely. 
think it's gonna it's kind of in the same ballpark as the one I'm about to swatch which is the green black but I think I think this one is lighter let's just neaten that off a little bit let's um swatch the other one and just see it's a good thing I have them side by side so you can see that the Rora and Klingner Frida has actually dried up quite light and I did think it might look similar to their Payne's Grey, the antique ink Payne's Grey, but quite different. Um, so yeah, it's always interesting to wait until they dry because I've noticed with inks especially that they do seem to change quite a bit from wet to dry. Sometimes, depends on the ink. Okay, so this one, the final ink that we're swatching today is the green black. You see, it's similar. It is similar to that one, but I think they are going to dry differently. We will see. It could be that I don't need both. But I do know that this is a colour I use a lot. <laughs> so... Yeah, I can see a difference. I don't know whether it's coming through on screen. We'll wait until they're dry and then we can really tell. Okay, I'm going to put that aside and let it dry fully. I'm going to swatch the acrylic gouache and the Ecoline brush pens. I'm going to speed up the footage um, and then I'm going to show you at the end. So here are the Ecoline brush pens in the pink and beige colours. There's pastel red, apricot, pink beige, sepia light and beige. Here I tried to add water to them because I don't know why, but I had a feeling that they might be water soluble. Um, they weren't, <laughs> basically. Um, no, it didn't do anything. So they're not water soluble, but I really like how they actually do look like they've been painted, especially the green ones. It doesn't look like I've used a pen on that at all. It actually looks like it's paint. Um, 
They are, let me just get one so I can tell you. It says Brilliant Colours Concentrated Formula. They seem really nice. They're lovely to work with. These are the first ones I have, so I don't know that much about them, but I know other people who use them in mixed media work. They're great for layering. So how I intend to use these is I will use them, um, say for example, I'd use one of these colours as a base layer and then I'd work on top with coloured pencil or neo colour. Um, I really like the colours. I think they're beautiful and I really like the way they feel when you use them. So the nib looks like that. So it's like a, um, just a classic brush pen really. And the ink is really free flowing. They're not light fast. Um, that I do know. So they'll be for sketchbook work only. Um, but yeah, really like them. I'm glad I got some to play around with. Very, very attracted to those colours. The greens are much brighter than I expected. <laughs> I wasn't expecting them to look quite so vibrant. But what I'll do with these is I will use them as a base layer. I think it's highly unlikely that I wouldn't layer over the top of these. Um, so I can easily make them a little bit more muted by using coloured pencils on top. Or something so yeah really really liking those um and then i did the turner acryl gouache so this is an acrylic gouache acrylic gouache for those of you who don't know is like a combination of acrylic and gouache as the name would suggest so it dries matte like traditional gouache so if you like that matte look you don't want like a slight sheen or a shine to the finished um, painting, you'll really like these because they dry super matte. Um, so in that respect, they're like gouache. They're like acrylic in that they, when they're dry, they don't re-wet. So you can layer on top as you would with acrylic. Um, so yeah, they become water resistant and um, yeah, they're fantastic for layering. I love using them for layering. These are beautiful colours, by the way. I waited, like, I mentioned this in the art hall, I think it was about five or six months for these colours to come back into stock on Jackson's. I had them on my wish list for absolutely ages. There's a slight difference between the Japanese colours and the normal colours. So I have how many Japanese? Four Japanese, no, five Japanese, because I've got the Japanese white. Um, the Japanese colours, you can't see this on screen, but they have a very slight grittiness to them, like a slight texture. It's almost like a slight sandy texture, whereas the normal range doesn't have that. You can mix the two together. The texture's not so noticeable that it would look strange to use the textured paint with the non-textured paint. Um, it's very, very subtle, but I think they're meant to mimic traditional Japanese paints and they have this slight texture from, I think, ground up shells or something like that. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I just really love working with acrylic gouache. It's one of my favourite mediums to use. And as I say, it's great for texture and layering. Um, so if you're into that, it dries really quickly as well. So you can layer really quickly. So basically, really happy with those. Um, loving that greyish green as well. Really nice colour. Um, but I think I think they're all lovely. I tried the white, even though you can't see it, just because I wanted to feel the texture. And it does have, because it's the Japanese white, it does have that slight um, grittiness to it. So this is how the inks look. Now that they're dry, really loving this herb in verdigris. It's such a lovely colour. And there's like this slight bit of granulation in there too. Um, that one's beautiful. We've already talked about that one. Really love that green. Loving this colour. I think this is going to be so good when autumn comes around. The paint grey is really nice. This green, super bright and lovely, will look really good mixed with the other greens or combined with the other greens rather. Um, I'm surprised at this one. This is a lot paler. Maybe I watered it down quite a bit, but it's a lot paler than I expected, but I really like it. This one is also a surprise. This Rora and Klingner sketch ink, the Frida. Um, they said petrol blue. I wouldn't call this petrol blue. Um, I think if you use it without water, it's going to obviously be darker. 
Um, it's a nice blue, but not as dark as I was expecting and possibly not quite as, I wouldn't say I expected it to be teal, but I did expect something a little bit different to this. Um, but I use blues all the time, so I'm, you know, I will happily use it. Um, this one is lovely and bright, the Carmen. Um, so I'm glad I have a really bright orange like that. Love all of the Liquitex um, acrylic inks. They look so fantastic. I absolutely love the colours. The Diamine O'Donnell. This one has dried much brighter than I was expecting. I was kind of thinking that this would be a much more subtle colour. This is why you can't go by the swatches online because this looked like it was a much more muted, I don't know whether pale is the right word, but it certainly wasn't vibrant like this, but it's a really pretty colour and I like it. I really love the teal. This reminds me a bit of, is it the Shire Blue? Is it Shire Blue? I think it might be. The Shiminka Horridan watercolour it reminds me a bit of that. Earl Grey reminds me of Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. And the Salamander and the Green Black actually do look quite different. The Salamander is a much more brownish kind of green and it has some separation in it too. Whereas the green black is, well, it looks just basically more green. Um, so there we go, <laughs> for want of a better way of describing it. Um, those are the ink swatches fully dried. I'm going to photograph this and offer this as a high res download to my patrons because I know that quite a few of them are interested in um, the swatch sheets so that they have that as kind of a reference for the future because obviously they're all labelled so I will do that within the next few days. So this is my new Stillman and Burn, I think it's the Alpha series, yeah Alpha series sketchbook. This um, arrived when I was in Suffolk in February but I only started using it the other day. Um, I haven't done anything in it apart from just practice with different materials on the first page because I wanted to see, having never used this paper before, how well it would deal with different materials. So here I experimented for the first time with my dip pen, the Takikawa dip pen that I showed you earlier. Um, I have some coloured pencils, watercolour pencils. This is the Holbein acrylic gouache. Um, I was going to do a few more patterns in that just for fun and here I was just trying the liquid charcoal I have some Schmincke liquid charcoal in a tube I'll just show you actually this one and um, I'm really enjoying using this this is so much fun to use I got that in an art hall last year and um, I love the effects you can get with it. I also tried smudging it once it was dry and on this paper it doesn't seem to smudge really at all. There's like minimal, minimal smudging there. But yeah, I really like the way that this paper handled different materials. So I think we'll just practice with the new glass dip pen in this section here. I'm going to try it with the sketch ink in the colour Lily. This is the Jacques Herban glass dip pen. This came from Colt Pens. It is a really, really lovely object. <laughs> so if you're looking for a gift for an artist, this could be something to get them. Um, this, it wasn't too expensive. It was £19.50, which I think for something like this, and it comes in a beautiful box, make a really nice gift. Okay, this is my first time trying this pen. I'm a little bit worried. Don't know how far to dip it in. Let's just see how, ooh, it feels nice. Let's just see how far that little um, bit of ink will take us. How long will it last? Okay, it's getting a little bit more scratchy. The lines get a bit thinner. I really love the quality of those lines. Okay, it seems to work quite well with this. It's just, I mean, I'm not gonna draw anything amazing because <laughs> I've never used this before. So I just want to get a feel for it. Oh, I like it. I really like it. I really enjoyed using the other one, the Takikawa. 
um, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, the Takikawa dip pen. And so I was hopeful that I would like this one as well. And actually, this is really nice to work with. I love the slightly scratchy sound it makes. I don't know what this is that I'm drawing. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. I'm going to dip it in again, but I don't know whether I actually need to. Okay, what should we... I know what I'm going to do. Let's just do some little tiny organic shapes. I just want to see actually how long I can keep going without having to dip it back in the ink. Okay, I can feel it's getting a little bit more scratchy, but it's still going. Yeah, getting a little bit more scratchy. How about if we fill some of these in? That's pretty good, isn't it? Yep, still going. Definitely getting a bit more scratchy. Yeah. Time to dip it in again. But I'm not having to dip it in. I don't know why I thought that perhaps I'd have to dip it in every, I don't know, couple of lines or something. And actually, that's not the case at all. We could do a good ASMR video with this, couldn't you? <laughs> I don't know whether the camera's picking that up, the microphone's picking that up rather. Yeah, I think we can say I'm a dip pen fan. <laughs> I'm getting on better with the dip pens than I did with the fountain pen. I'm hoping I have more luck with the Lamy Safari than I did the Noodlers Ahab. <laughs> they have such funny names, don't they? Um, anyway, I'm going to persevere with the fountain pens, but I'm loving the dip pens. I can really see myself using these in my work. And this one has a slightly different quality to the other one I was using with the metal nib. So yeah, different pens for different effects. And I'm sure if you use different inks, it will be you know, you can have the variety there as well. But that's all we're going to do for this video. It's turned into such an incredibly long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you stayed to the end, just say to me, I don't know, I'm here at the end. <laughs> that will do for today. We won't have a special saying. Just tell me you made it to the end. Um, thank you very much if you did. And next I'm going to film the watercolour swatching. So... That will be the next video um, within the next couple of days. I think I'm going to get that up on YouTube. So, yeah, I look forward to sharing the watercolours with you as well. OK, bye for now, everyone. Take care and I'll see you soon.